Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habati fillah a question was asked about haram police meaning that they uh, an individual I believe in the west suggested that we should have uh, Muslim patrols or uh, that command the good and forbid the evil basically that they go around communities and I believe you have some some individuals in certain places I think in, in here in the in the US in New York and uh, I believe and uh, maybe Cleveland or something I saw something in the media once about this uh, my advice is not to do this and it's for a few reasons because the Prophet Sallallahu said من راء منكم منقرة فلي غيره بيد فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك عدو في الإيمان رواه مسلم. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever sees a good, uh, an evil, uh, change it with his hand. If he is unable to do so, then change it with his tongue, speak out against it. And if he is unable to do so, change it with his heart, and that is the weakest form of iman. And this is in Sahih Muslim. The Shahid Habitafillah with this hadith, and me mentioning this hadith that Rasulullah is that change in the munkar, yu'ud ila istata'a. Changing sinfulness, it goes back to the ability to be able to do so. It isn't just based on our desires, it isn't based on ignorance. And it isn't based upon weakness. Like all ibadah, you must have qudra. You must have an ability to perform that act of worship or the act of worship is no longer uh, an obligation upon you. So, for example, the one who uh, cannot pray standing, they do not, they no longer possess the qudra. They don't have the ability anymore to stand during the prayer. So it is permissible for him or permissible for her to uh, pray sitting. And this goes with all, uh, all types of worship. And so with, in the Bab of Amr bin Maruf and Nahi al-Munkar, the ulama have written extensively about this topic. And one of the things that some of the groups have misunderstood, especially uh, not just in the West, but it, we, we're familiar with those cases. Uh, case studies here in America, for example, specifically, we know of groups, especially some of us, our backgrounds, we come from, uh, so, some of us come from the Nation of Islam. They come from other groups who had their own policies of commanding the good and forbidding the evil. And then those who even uh, later, who were Muslim groups, who, be, who are radical Muslim groups, extreme Muslim groups, where they didn't uh, have the, the prerequisite knowledge and they wanted to command the good and forbid the evil, and they did not look at the Musala and the Mufasid, meaning the harms and the benefits of doing so. And by not looking at the harms and the benefits of doing so, they caused greater harm than good. Let me give you one example that I know personally. Uh, an individual was asked from a community I used to be a part of. In fact, I was the individual. Let's just go ahead and say it. I was asked to go pick up an individual, not ask questions, and come to find out this individual was wanted later. Later we found out. Didn't have any idea. This we found out much, maybe a long time later, years or a long time later, found out this particular individual was wanted and wanted for a heinous crime that was committed under the guise of commanding the good and forbidding the evil. <clears throat> so this shows you how bid'ah and jahil, you know, innovation, religious innovation and ignorance only leads to a greater harm, more mafsada. Even if they're trying to practice an aspect of the deen, commanding the good and forbidding the evil. So with that being the background of what I'm ta talking about, Habitabillah, I would not advise <clears throat> any of these uh, type of patrols for one of the, the, the things uh, to know the boundaries of the shara. People need to know 
what are the uh, rules and the responsibilities of the Sharia. And they have to have the ability to be able to implement that. And ability means that they are in authority. This is what the ulama sunnah in the past wrote about like Imam Muwardi in his book uh, uh, Ahkam al-Sultaniya or, or something similar to this in his book which talks about the rules of leadership. You know, these are books in what they call uh, um, Islamic uh, politics or uh, Ulum Asiasi uh, Islami or something similar to this. I forgot what the term is. Uh, and so the point being a is one of the things that must be in a place before you even begin to think you're going to implement things is that you have control of the land or you have control of where you are. You can't begin to implement things which are against the laws of your land and you cannot protect your community. You're living in a non-Muslim land and for example, there are certain things of the shutter that you are you don't have the ability to practice or you don't have the ability to implement or whatever the case may be. It goes against the governing laws. You think you're being obedient to a law by forcing those actions or punishments or whatever on the people. But in fact, you cause a greater harm to where your masjid gets shut down. Maybe the police kill you. Maybe the, you know, on and on and on. That's just a, a, a limited example, which we've seen practiced. So don't think these are just weird, strange, hypothetical scenarios. These are real case studies. We could mention many from the times of groups like the nation, from before the nation, the uh, or, or the, the Moorish temple. And then all through the history here in America of various groups that had deviancy that tried to implement things which went against the governing authorities, which were not practical, which were not necessary. They only cause a greater harm for their communities, maybe the destruction of their communities. So this, my advice is, is you begin by commanding the good and forbidding the evil on yourself, okay? Policing yourself, making sure you're not doing haram, you're not doing those bad actions, advising your brothers and sisters with gentleness with the ability to do so if you have the qudra if you have the ability to do so you know advise if you see a sister she's walking by the masjid whatever the case may be you advise her with gentleness and kind of sister you know may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and, and, and reward you and guide you and forgive us and you you know uh, you know it's better if you wear a longer hijab or you know you should, you know, do this or that. Brother, you know, it's better you, uh, you know, not go to those kind of places. You know, you, you do that and you can do that in private. You can advise and guide one another. The Prophet Sallallahu said, a deen al-Nasiha. The religion is sincere advice. So, it's very important that we re maintain that bab of advising one another, calling one another to good, and uh, uh, advising one another and preventing the evil to the best of our ability. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم